Welcome to Lesson 7D, Power Function Complex Potential. In this lesson, we'll discuss the complex potential called the power function. I'll show several examples, flows that depend on the exponent, and I'll discuss the significance of streamlines as walls. I'll start by saying that this is a completely inverse method. In other words, we just pick an analytic function in this case, w of z equals some constant a, z to exponent n. a and n are real constants. This is called the power function. This is our complex potential. To get the complex velocity, we take the derivative, which is simply n a, z to the n minus 1. We can split both w and dw dz into components. We know that w equal phi plus i psi, and from our definition, w is a z to the n, which we'll write as a r e to the i theta to the n, since z can be written as r e to the i theta. But also recall that e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. So we'll write this as a r to the n cosine theta plus i sine theta splitting up the real and imaginary parts, we see that phi is a r to the n cosine n theta, and psi is equal to a r to the n sine n theta. These are our real potential and streamline equations. Similarly, for the complex velocity, we again set z equal r e to the i theta, and z is raised to exponent n minus 1. We'll expand this to n a r to the n minus 1 e to the i n theta e to the negative i theta. But similar to this equation, e to the i n theta is cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. So our complex velocity becomes n a r to the n minus 1 times cosine n theta plus i sine n theta e to the negative i theta. But we also know that dw dz in cylindrical coordinates is ur minus i u theta e to the negative i theta. Comparing these two, ur equal n a r to the n minus 1 cosine n theta, and u theta equal minus n a r to the n minus 1 sine n theta. These are the two components of the velocity field for any n in cylindrical coordinates. Now notice that both psi and u theta have sine n theta in their respective equations. We know that sine n theta is zero when n theta is zero, or plus or minus pi, plus or minus two pi, etc. Therefore, psi equals zero and u theta equals zero, again when sine n theta is zero, which are all these cases, so we write when theta equal k pi over n for k equal to any integer. Notice that k can be zero and any positive or negative integer here to make sine n theta equal zero. This is an important conclusion, and what does it mean? It means that psi equals zero and u theta equals zero along rays theta equal k pi over n. We'll use this fact to construct the geometry of our flows. The type of flow will depend on this exponent n. Here are some example flows based on the exponent. Let's set n equal 1, then w equal a z, which we should recognize as a uniform stream in the x direction. Specifically for speed u, we let a equal u, and we have our uniform stream. In all these cases, we'll look at the psi equals zero rays, recalling that psi equals zero and u theta equals zero along rays where theta is k pi over n, where k is any integer. Here for n equal one, the rays occur when theta is k pi. Again, in our xy plane, streamlines are parallel horizontal lines, and theta equals zero by definition along this ray, namely the x-axis, that's when k equals zero. The next k occurs when theta equal pi, k equal one, so that's this ray along the negative x-axis. These rays are streamlines in the flow, as we already know. The flow goes from left to right along both of these rays. So this flow can be thought of as a uniform stream. 
but if we consider only the upper half, we can think of this x-axis as a wall, so we can think of this flow as flow over an infinite flat plate. I'll make an important comment here. Any streamline in a potential flow can be thought of as a wall. This is because the flow is irrotational and therefore net viscous forces are zero. In potential flow, we can't apply the no slip condition. You can pick any streamline or any portion of a streamline and think of it as a wall. For example, we can think of this streamline as a wall. Now we have uniform flow that hits a flat plate and just flows parallel to it. This would be a semi-infinite flat plate. By the way, since psi equal a r to the n sine n theta, and we're looking at the case where n equal 1, psi is equal to a r sine theta, but r sine theta is y, so psi equal a y, and when a equal u, psi equal u times y, which agrees with our previous equation for psi for a uniform stream. We also see that different values of psi form different streamlines, where y would be some constant along a constant value of psi. Now let's look at n equal 2. Again, rays of psi equal 0 fall along rays where theta is k pi over n, which is k pi over 2 here, i.e. psi equals 0 at theta equals 0 when k equals 0, pi over 2 when k equal 1, pi when k equal 2, etc. For this flow, our complex potential is a z to the 2 power, or z squared, and psi here becomes a r squared sine 2 theta. But you may recall that sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta, so psi equal a r squared 2 sine theta cosine theta, which we'll write as psi equal 2 a r cosine theta r sine theta. But we know that r cosine theta is x and r sine theta is y. So psi is 2a x y. In all these cases, once we have psi, we can plot y versus x at some psi value to get a streamline, and then repeat this for different values of psi, keeping a constant. When we do that for several values of psi, we get these streamlines. Both axes are streamlines and the flow comes down from the top and turns 90 degrees to the right. This flow is mirror imaged about the y-axis, and it's also mirror imaged about the x-axis. When k equals 0, theta equals 0, and this is our first psi equals 0 ray or streamline. When k equals 1, theta is pi over 2. When k equals 2, theta equals pi. And finally, when k equals 3, theta is 3 pi over 2. All of these rays in the 490 degree directions are psi equals 0 streamlines. What flow does this model? Again, we use our statement that any streamline can be thought of as a wall. So depending on which streamline or streamlines we pick, we can model different kinds of flow. Here are some examples. If we pick the x and y axes as walls, we model flow in a corner. If instead we pick one of our curved streamlines, such as this one, and think of it as a wall, we have flow in a rounded corner. Note the limitation that the wall must be the shape of the streamline for this model to represent something physical. We can't have just an arbitrary curved surface. As another example, we'll pick the entire x-axis as a wall, and keeping in mind that this y-axis is also a streamline, the origin turns out to be a stagnation point where the velocity is zero. So this flow represents 2D stagnation point flow. If you turn this flow 90 degrees, this flow becomes useful later on to model flow into a stagnation point at the leading edge of some 2D body like an airfoil. If we get out a magnifying glass and turn our head 90 degrees, this is what we see, stagnation point flow. This will also be useful later on when we attach a boundary layer along this body. Now let's let n lie between 1 and 2. In other words, n is not an integer. Again, psi equals 0 and u theta equals 0 on rays where theta is k pi over n. Here n is not an integer, but k is still an integer. We can easily draw this flow as well. When theta equals 0 in all these cases, psi is equal to 0. But when k equals 1, 
theta equal pi over n, and this streamline also has psi equal zero. Remember that when n equal one, the negative x-axis was a psi equal zero streamline, but here n is greater than one, so the zero streamline is along some angle theta. I'll make a comment as you have seen so far. The x-axis is always a psi equal zero streamline for the k equals zero case for any exponent n. The rest of the streamlines are curved and go from the top left to the lower right. And depending on the value of n, the next psi equals zero line, or ray, is when k equal two and theta equal two pi over n. The streamlines look similar to these. Again, what kind of flow does this represent? Well, we can take the first two streamlines and think of those as a wall. So here we are modeling flow in an obtuse corner. My brother here can be really obtuse sometimes. So <laughs> can you, bro. Yes, I guess I suppose we all can. Obtuse here means the angle, this angle, is greater than 90 degrees. Again, instead of this wall, we could pick one of these curved streamlines. So here we model flow in a rounded obtuse corner. Again, we're limited because the corner must be of this exact shape, or this one, or any other streamline in the flow. You can imagine the positive x-axis and this k equal two streamline as walls. And if you rotate your head a little bit, you can model flow into a pointed body. Here I drew it at the same angle as this, but we can rotate it to think of uniform flow hitting the leading edge of a body with a sharp corner. Now consider the case when n is greater than two. Again, rays of psi equals zero occur when theta is k pi over n. So the zeroth ray is at k equals zero, which always gives us theta equals zero, the x-axis. The first non-zero ray is at k equal one, which is at theta equal pi over n. Well, here n is greater than two, so theta is always less than 90 degrees. I'll sketch just the upper half of the flow. The zero ray is along the x-axis, and the k equal one ray is at some acute angle, theta equal pi over n. If we rotate another pi over n, we get the second ray. Again, you'd have to solve for psi as a function of x and y to plot streamlines. They turn out to look something like this on the right side, and mirror imaged about the k equal one line on this portion. Again, what flows does this model? If we take the zeroth and the first ray and think of those as walls, we have flow in an acute angle corner. My friend Thud's got a cute kitten named Spud. Uh, that's nice, Dud, but acute is one word here and it means an angle less than 90 degrees. Oh, okay. You could also pick one streamline here and have flow in a rounded corner specifically a rounded acute corner, or we can pick both this streamline and this streamline as walls. And then we have a flow like this, which again has a stagnation point here. So this can perhaps represent flow near the stagnation point of an object like this, shaped kind of like a Pac-Man, where again, if you zoom in with a magnifying glass and rotate your head, you would see this flow. We'll call this stagnation flow into a concave corner. We can have other values of n. For example, if n is between 2 thirds and 1, the angle between the k equals 0 ray and the k equals 1 ray gets bigger as n approaches 2 thirds. We already talked about the n equal 1 case, which was the uniform stream. If n equals something like 0 0.8, the angle between the k equals 0 and the k equals 1 line which is pi for the n equal one case, becomes pi over 0 0.8 for the n equal 0.8 case. The flow would go something like this, and just as we can think of this as a wall, we can think of this as a wall. So here we have flow over a pi over 0 0.8 corner. Of course, the general case is theta equal pi over n. The value of n equal two thirds is a special case. In that case, psi equals zero, at theta equal k pi over n, which is three k pi over two for n equal two thirds, k equals zero, theta equals zero as always. When k equal one, theta is three pi over two. 
which means that we have this streamline and this streamline as our rays when theta equals 0 and 3 pi over 2. The streamlines would look something like this, where the flow comes up and turns to the right, flow over a 90 degree step. Although this looks kind of cool perhaps, this flow is non-physical. A real flow will separate at this sharp corner. The flow can't go through a sudden change of angle like this without separating. Very quickly, if n is less than two-thirds, the flow gets even more unphysical with streamlines that must go around a very sharp corner, something like this, if we let these two streamlines, k equals zero and k equals one, be thought of as walls. This flow is very unphysical, since it would separate here at this sharp corner. I'll further restrict this to n greater than a half and less than two-thirds so that we can talk about another case when n equal a half. The k equals zero streamline is again along the x-axis, but the k equal one streamline goes around two pi when n equal a half and is therefore also along the x-axis. This flow would look something like this, where we can think of the x-axis as a wall or a flat plate with flow going entirely around it. As you might imagine, this flow is extremely unphysical. Finally, what happens if we have n equal negative 1? This gives us w of z equal a z to the minus 1, or a over z. Can one of you students tell me what kind of flow is this? Since z is in the denominator, it must have a singularity at the origin. Is it a source that has rays that go out in all directions? A good guess, Sean, but it's actually one of our other building blocks. Is it a doublet? Yes, it's a doublet. Recall that w of z is mu over z for a doublet. So if we let a equal mu, we have a doublet. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.